Hello everybody, how are you? This is Andrea and welcome to part 2 of my Girls in Sunglasses series. I'm very excited to show you the process of the second girl, so I hope that you will enjoy it. Just like last time, I will use a mix of different palettes. I am using some Jane Davenport, some Rachel Beth and Prima watercolors. As usual, Namine is the art director for this piece and she will ensure that my work is on the right track. So yeah, don't you worry about that. Look at her, she is fired up and ready to roll. Back to the illustration. The first step was sketching on the iPad Pro. I'm trying to be very mindful about the poses of all the three girls. And that's because I really want them to look great, not just as an individual piece, but I want them to look really good when they are together next to each other as a group. That's why in the pink piece the girl is facing to the left, for this one in the teal piece she is facing to the right, and the third girl will be facing towards the front. Oh, and before I forget, this sketch was done on the Procreate app. Once the sketch is done, I trace it on watercolor paper. I generally prefer using a light box for this, but today I decided to do things old school and use my window. After I have the basic shapes on the paper, I continue adding the finer details. And now I tape down the paper using normal masking tape. Okay, we are ready. I have the watercolors, two cups of water, brushes and a towel, so let's start painting.
remember the previous illustration, which had the pink line work. Well, this one will have the line work done in purple. I think that teal and purple work so well together, it's one of my favorite combinations. But before I decided to do this, I did try all sorts of color combinations on my iPad Pro. This is why I love sketching on the iPad, because then I can test if what I have in mind will look good in the end. While I was working on the illustration, I was also experimenting making my own watercolors. This was on my to-do list for such a long time, so I'm so excited to finally be doing and learning this kind of craft. Here you can see a little sneak peek of the process. I mix all of the ingredients in a bowl and then I mull it on a glass until it is all nice and creamy. I was so happy with the results that I decided to make some dot cards to sell on Etsy, but I'll share more about that in another video. So the reason why I'm mentioning my handmade watercolors is because I ended up using one of them in this illustration. I felt that the teal color was a little bit too flat and light and that it really needed some more vibrancy. So I ended up making a vibrant turquoise to help me with that. But before I share more about that, let me quickly add some more shading with some simple pencils. Okay, here you can see the teal and sky blue watercolors that I made. I will now apply the teal shade just to give her hair a little bit more dimension. This made such a big difference and, you know, I am really proud for being able to handmade watercolors that meet my standards in not only the shade and color, but also the texture and consistency. So many times I bought colors that were either too gummy in consistency or just simply too granulating for my liking. Or maybe they were just difficult to activate with water or a little bit too transparent for my projects. But now I can create the exact type of watercolors that I need. Okay, last but not least, I will give some final touches to the hair. I was not very happy with how the pink fringe looked, that's why I used these opaque pencils to fix it. All done! Time to peel off the tape and then she is complete! So this is it guys! I hope that you've enjoyed watching the process. 
I will have the print available on my Etsy store shortly in case you would like one for yourself or to give as a present. And yeah, next time I will show you the third and final girl of the series. Alright guys, this is all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I will talk to you again very soon. Bye!